This is an ultrasound examination of the carotid arteries. This is a grayscale image of the right subclavian artery. We can see that color Doppler fills this artery with color indicating the absence or at least paucity of disease. The Doppler waveform of the right subclavian artery is normal. We have a peak systolic velocity of 102 centimeters per second. There's clearly reverse flow and uh, we can't tell from this image whether or not there is uh, a third phase, but this is at least a biphasic waveform. This small amount of what looks like noise along the baseline is probably uh, interference from venous flow. This is an image of the vertebral artery. The artery appears red on this image. Uh, red would be flow toward the top of the screen and we can see as the, the vertebral artery flows it is going closer to the top of the screen which of course represents the transducer. The Doppler waveform for the vertebral artery is perfectly normal. This is an image of the common carotid artery in a proximal portion. Perhaps a, a trace of intimal thickening, although uh, this is probably just good visualization of the, the enema and media together. Color Doppler with pulse Doppler superimposed demonstrates normal flow velocities and it appears that the lumen is largely filled with color Doppler. Now this was frozen. This line demonstrates when the uh, updating occurred during systole and uh, you know, or during diastole. It's always advisable to freeze during systole. And this is would probably fill in if that had been the case. This is color Doppler of the uh, carotid artery, the jugular vein up here color uh, Doppler showing that the artery is filling with flow. This is color bleeding due to a high uh, color gain setting. This is a fairly high PRF value for the color box. If this is, would be reduced, we'd have brighter colors and we wouldn't have the need to push our color Doppler gain up as much as it is. This is grayscale imaging of the distal common carotid artery and it does appear that there is this small amount of intimal thickening. Color Doppler confirms that. We can see the flow does not go all the way to the outer wall but just to this thickened enema in both the far field and also visualized on the near field as well. Pulse Doppler shows perfectly normal signal with the a beautiful waveform, nice spectral window, very sharp, straight upstroke, nice dichrotic notch. All normal features of a uh, common carotid artery. Again, this image was updated during syst or during diastole. It's always advisable to update during systole. This is an image of the bifurcation. This is the portion of the bifurcation that includes the ICA. There are no branches and it's getting deeper as we go in. We can see some flow separation in the carotid bulb, some calcific plaque, and some non-shadowing hypochoic plaque present in the proximal ICA and bulb of the carotid artery. Here's another look at the, this would be the ECA coming up here, the plaque going down into the internal carotid artery. One more look. Flow separator and uh, flow continuing beyond the bifurcation. This is the proximal ICA. We have some plaque here. We have a very, very uh, narrow area here distally. The signal in the proximal internal carotid artery is uh, 48 centimeters per second. Peak systole and diastole is 13 centimeters per second. Uh, 
there is some spectral broadening here and if we look at where the peak systole is we can see a rounding of the peak so a small amount of parvus tardis just telling us that we are imaging distal to disease and here's the disease and here's where we're getting our signal distally another image this one is uh, uh, magnified and, and we can see uh, the flow in the uh, internal carotid artery. Appears to be some disease uh, further downstream. And that is the case. If we measure in the middle uh, internal carotid artery, we can see uh, a systolic velocity of 429 centimeters per second. This is much greater than the 230 centimeter per second discriminator for 70%. Diastole and diastole is also elevated at 170 centimeters per second. So this clearly is a high-grade clinically significant stenosis. Notice the sepia uh, color that is used for the waveform. This color uh, sometimes allows uh, intimal thickening to be better visualized. One more look at the middle uh, internal carotid artery at the area of uh, narrowing. Another color image showing all the aliasing that is occurring at this high-grade stenosis. Another image. And now we are looking uh, uh, at the highest velocity that was obtained, nearly 500 centimeters per second in systole and nearly 200 in diastole. Clearly a very high grade stenosis. Here's the distal portion of the artery and the signal gives us much lower velocities and uh, we are now out of the area of stenosis and are looking at post-stenotic flow. We see a zigzag parvus tardis, sometimes called a, a sawtooth patterned waveform with significant spectral broadening. Another image showing the flow through the distal ICA. This is an image of the external carotid artery. We can see there is a little plaque approximately. We get a, a, a nice looking waveform, very sharp uh, upstroke, nice deep dichrotic notch, low velocity at end diastole. Uh, normal or nearly normal external carotid artery. Now this is uh, the stenosis in the ICA again uh, imaged and uh, clearly aliasing and significant disease. This is a magnified view transverse of the right bifurcation. ICA, ECA, and this is the middle ICA. We can see just a very tiny amount of flow. This is the uh, internal jugular vein uh, above it. Here's the left subclavian artery. Appears to be free of disease. Color Doppler fills it. This is color bleeding here and uh, indicates again a high color Doppler gain setting. Usually this, this happens when the uh, PRF is, is set too high and the PRF is 60. We rather high setting. This is uh, the waveform. It's biphasic. It's got a nice sharp upstroke. Hit of a window, uh, of a spectral window. And this is a normal or near normal subclavian artery waveform. Vertebral artery should be flowing downward as we go from right to left. That is the case. We've got red at the bottom of the color bar, and uh, we have inverted our scale. See the minus is on top here, so that uh, flow away from the transducer appears on top of the line. Nice image of the common carotid artery in a proximal location. Hint of uh, mild uh, animal thickening. Color Doppler confirms it by showing the absence of flow in the 
areas adjacent to the wall. This is a normal uh, common carotid artery signal in the proximal region and uh, nice spectral window can be demonstrated. An image of the distal common carotid artery, again small amount of animal thickening. Uh, this was frozen probably during diastole, so it's exaggerating the lack of flow near the wall. We get a good signal, and uh, again, good spectral window, normal velocities. This is the bifurcation. This is probably the ICA in the direction and the size. And at the origin, we can see a very high-grade stenosis once again. Uh, this is uh, 450 almost centimeters per second. The end diastole is 176. This indicates well over 70% stenosis, where the criteria for systolic, peak systolic, would be 230 centimeters per second. This is all hypoechoic, non-shadowing, homogeneous plaque. We see some more this way as we move away from the, uh, the origin. We can see even more plaque. Because the plaque is hypoechoic, it does not show up well on a grayscale image only. Here's the proximal again with the tightest area of stenosis. Here's another signal just distal to the, uh, the last signal. And again, we're getting very similar results at nearly 450 centimeters per second uh, in uh, peak systolic flow. The mid portion of the ICA, the flow is dropping back down into normal range. But clearly, there's evidence of turbulence. We've got flow on both sides of the line marked animal thickening as well. Color Doppler imaging showing the middle portion and now, now we're looking at the uh, distal portion of the ICA. This is rather deep and, and uh, it can be very difficult to image arteries that are at this angle and this deep. Uh, this is a nice signal. We're getting uh, 66 over 31 centimeters per second. Uh, we're losing the turbulence now, but there's still some evidence of uh, spectral broadening. So the flow is starting to become more laminar as we move away from the stenosis. Another image of the distal. This is the external carotid artery, a little bit of uh, hypoechoic non-shadowing plaque. We see a, uh, a, a nice branch coming off the external carotid artery identifying it for us. We get a perfectly normal signal with a deep dichrotic notch, nice spectral window, and uh, very low flow at uh, end diastole. Grayscale image showing a little bit of that uh, animal thickening or, or non-shadowing plaque that's present in this vessel. This is the bifurcation. Here's the ICA uh, toward the top of the screen. We see a lot of plaque surrounding at the external carotid down here. Here at the narrowing we have, uh, this is this is actually the size of the vessel it goes all the way out to here and this is all hypoechoic plaque. Another bifurcation again with the ECA more medial and the uh, ICA lateral. It's getting bigger now as we're beyond the area of stenosis. Grayscale doesn't help us much on this image. So on this patient, we've got high-grade stenosis in both internal carotid arteries. Uh, it is uh, in, in, on both sides, the stenosis is greater than 70%. We have normal flow in the external carotid arteries, normal flow in the subclavian arteries, and anti-grade normal flow in the vertebral arteries.